Hi, I'm Kevin Moriarty. Uh, today I'm talking with Sam Frisbee. He is a former director of Trenton's Recreation Department under the previous Mayor Doug Palmer. Uh, he's currently a self-employed consultant in organizational and professional development. His work on the city's youth development uh, program, which he designed and managed, was recognized by the U.S. Conference of Mayors in 2005. He's now, among his other activities, the uh, CEO of the Trenton YMCA. Uh, he lives in Trenton's Cadwalder Heights with his wife and two sons. Early this year, Mr. Frisbee was appointed to the Mercer County Board of Chosen Freeholders. He was selected in February at a special convention of Mercer County's Democratic Committee to serve out the remainder of former uh, freeholder Dan Benson's term. Mr. Benson resigned from the freeholder board to become a state assemblyman from, for the 14th legislative district. He's now running in the coming election on November the 8th with fellow freeholder candidates Lucy Walter and John Cimino for his first full three-year term. The trio is seeking to keep the board in the exclusive hands of Democrats, as it has been for over a decade. Democratic incumbents are also seeking to retain the Mercer offices of county executive, surrogate, and sheriff. Democrat incumbents will also be defending seats in the state assembly and senate from the 14th and 15th legislative districts. Countywide, Mercer has been deep blue for years in a, a county that has historically been very competitive for Republicans. Freeholder, good evening, and thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Why have the Democrats had Mercer locked up for so long? And do you think this streak will continue this November? Well, I believe that it will continue this November. Uh, you, the, Mercer County is a very different county. You have very educated voters in this particular county. Uh, and when people look at you know, Republicans, Democrats, we put up some pretty strong candidates over the years, people with very good experience, uh, and when you look in uh, Trenton, which is very interesting, I, I, I looked at the numbers, I thought Trenton was more of a Democratic uh, municipality than it actually is. I think that uh, the last numbers I looked at, it was about 46% uh, Democrats, 5% Republicans, but everybody else are undecided. Independent. That's right. Very strong independent street. And you find that countywide too? Find that countywide. It's, it's very heavy in Hamilton, uh, pretty much the same. You have some of our counties which are actually very, I mean, some of our municipalities which are very strong uh, Democratic uh, municipalities like East Windsor, uh, Princeton. They're very, very strong. They don't have as many uh, independents there. Uh, but still, this county swings a lot. Of, there are a lot of swing votes, a lot of swing votes in this county. You joined the Freeholder Board in February, mere days before uh, County Executive Brian Hughes submitted his calendar year 2011 budget for the board's approval. <laughs> this budget called for a reduction in revenues and expenses of nearly $32 million from 2010. Yet Mr. Hughes balanced that budget, and you, your colleagues did as well, without increasing county taxes at all. We're into the 10th month of this budget year. How's the county doing? Are revenue and expense, expense projections on track with the budget? Actually, they're, they're better than on track. Uh, when you look at the county courthouse, which you know, everybody, that's the largest project that uh, has ever been uh, put forward in this county, $80 million project. It's actually ahead of, time, ahead of schedule and better than on budget. Uh, but in all, we still cut $10 million out of the budget on the freeholder end after Brian had already cut $30 million mm -hmm. out on his end. So we've been able to balance the budget, and I think that that's what's important for taxpayers right now. They want to make sure that not only are we giving them good government, strong government, but they do not want their taxes to go up, and they don't want services to go down. And I think we, we've done a great job of doing both. In the kind of climate that we're in nationally and statewide, that, that's quite an accomplishment. What are your what do you think the prospects are for repeating that that uh, for next year? Well, I think it's pretty strong. I think that you know we've been able to look at uh, the areas of the budget which generally create challenges. There were you know there were some unfilled positions last year, and the county wants to fill those positions, but some of them they said you know we're going to let them stay <clears throat> unfilled because it's just it's too costly to bring them on. I think that the the uh, government workers have sacrificed a lot. Uh, they have actually not had a raise in three years. You know, the county exec has not had a raise in three years, neither have the other employees throughout the county. So I have to applaud them for that. Um, I think that we're going to try and hold that stout this year as well, because the way that the, the economy is right now, people don't want to see people giving raises. And so it's going to be pretty challenging. Um, but I think that we can hold it stout. Good. 
Mercer County has a large and visible presence throughout the city of Trenton. From the County Building on South Broad Street to the Sunbank Arena, Waterfront Park, the James Kearney campus of the County Community College, and what has been the largest construction project in the city for the last few years, the new County Courthouse we were talking about just a few moments ago. Most of the projects I've named were undertaken with at least the partial hope that they would jumpstart Trenton's economy by creating anchors around which new commercial and residential development would grow. Unfortunately, that didn't end up happening as much as had been hoped. For your next three years, what role do you see, if any, for the county in stimulating Trenton's redevelopment? Well, I think that it's the partnerships that we have to develop with the city uh, that will strengthen that. If you look at the project uh, on South Broad Street, right across from the arena, you know that MCIA has just kind of taken over one of the buildings uh, and there's going to be market rate, building, uh, market rate businesses that will be on the first floor of that particular building. We've taken down all the old de decrepit buildings that were right on South Broad Street that were b blocking the view and I've been talking with MCIA about how we partner to get Eagle Tavern back up and on its feet. Uh, when you look down Broad Street, there is a lighting project that PSENG has just undertaken uh, that was started in the last administration and carried forward, forward with this particular administration. But there are some ways that we're actually looking at doing some facade uh, improvements and also more lighting development so that it carries all the way down to, uh, to the arena. It's important that when you look at uh, municipalities in the county, which really are, um, we're tenant uh, to the municipality, it's how we partner and how we look at where you know, we can meet the, meet the municipality halfway. If you do this portion of it, we can ta undertake this because it, it bodes well for both entities. The county recently took the lead in the effort partnering with the State Department of Environmental Protection that led to the announcement in September that the archeological dig at Petty's Run would be preserved. Why was this important to the county? It was very important to the county because, you know, in, in the county executive, I give him kudos on this. He and I have had discussions about you know, what can we do in order to bolster our standing as a tourist spot. And I'm not just talking about Trenton because it, it can't be just one municipality. It has to be our county that looks at this and says, you know, how do we get tourism jump started in our municipality? That, would, that is a jewel sitting right in the middle of the city, right next to the state capitol, that w that's important. There's a lot of history that is in Petty's Run that we've yet to uncover. And so you know, the county exec thought that it was very important, the freeholders thought that it was very important, that we make sure that that does not get filled back in because it becomes an opportunity to spur economic development. Once you really clean that place up, interpret what's there, you know, catalog what's there, it becomes a great opportunity to draw people not only into the city, but to draw people to the county so that they understand what's there. Three weeks ago, Trenton's police department laid off over 100 of its police officers. How has the county sheriff's office been affected? I know that I've seen uh, some t more targeted outreaches here in the city, but just over the last six months. And you know, I've had conversations with uh, Sheriff Kemmler about, you know, hey, look, we have some areas in the city, a couple drug houses that uh, the city can't actually get to. The city police are overtaxed. Can you look into this? And because that's <clears throat> one of our sting units that we have, they've been able to look into that. Their warrant squad has been very heavy here. I drive up and down, you know, Stuyvesant Avenue and you know, some other sections of the city, and I see our sheriff's officers out. So we know that they're connected with uh, Trenton PD. How much more they'll be able to do, I'm not sure. But we know that we will continue those targeted outreaches, and if there are areas that we can, we can set up more special things, we'll be able to do that as well. Uh, is Sheriff Kemmler and the police department working with the state police on Trenton's problems? One of the things that I'd like to see is that uh, you know, our state police, because we are the state capital, they have to take a more active role. Um, you know, the state has to take a more active role in this city, uh, especially, because they have so much land here in the city. When I lived in, in Washington, D.C., uh, we had multiple police organizations that carried certain jurisdictions. If you had a park that was a federal park in the middle of the District of Columbia, the federal park police would actually take that park. You know, although the um, you know, city's police officers were around, 
that wasn't their jurisdiction. And so at the state house, along State Street, certain areas that are state buildings, the police, state police really need to be policing those areas to free up the city's police officers and to free up where the county uh, sheriff's officers have to go. On September the 21st, your Republican opponents uh, brought the city of Trenton into the, your campaign as an issue when each of them expressed support for the recall drive currently underway to remove Mayor Tony Mack. Where do you stand on the recall petition? You know, that is, you know, that is municipal business, and I'm a, I'm a city resident, so I have my own op opinion, which I will reserve. Um, but as a county, you know, we are, you know, we're county government. We can't push you know, the, the municipality into certain areas. You know, we'd like to see uh, more communication uh, from the municipality. We want to be able to help in the areas that we can help. Um, but that is not the county's, county's role, it, you know, to get involved into the municipal politics. Okay, let's follow up from that. Uh, Trenton's affairs have impacted the lives of thousands of your constituents in the county outside the city limits by the many problems experienced by the Trenton Water Works over the last few years. Yes, they have. Today, October 7th, uh, a county superior court judge granted a temporary restraining order halting the dismissal of two Water Works employees who claimed they were being hounded as whistleblowers after their grand jury testimony in the case brought against the mayor's half-brother, Stanley Davis. With management problems, corruption allegations, and service issues, is Trenton serving its Mercer County customers well? Is there any county-wide solution to these problems that, that you favor? Are we serving uh, our, our county, uh, the rest of our residents well it, with the water? We've had uh, some major challenges. Um, and I know that the person that was head of Water Works when I was part of the city administration is no longer the person that is the head of the, you know, the Water Works. He had some of the best experience, you know, not only in the state, but probably nationwide when it come, came to water regulations and keeping our water safe and clean. Um, I think we probably need to look at, you know, and I don't know who is heading that, that division up now, but it's been, a, it's been a problem. You know, I've turned on my water a couple times and it's been brown coming out and I wasn't happy. Uh, you know, we've got to look at the people that we have in key positions and I have to understand whether or not they have um, the experience to actually be in those particular positions. Well, what do you hear from your countywide constituents regarding the... They're the, concerned. Yeah. You know, there, there is a major concern countywide uh, about you know, where we are as a municipality with our city. We're the capital city. And as the capital city goes, so goes the rest of the county. One thing that we realize is that if the municipality is strong, the county's even stronger. And yeah, we, we have, our finances are, are in order at the county level. Uh, you know, we have strong uh, you know, demographic finances you know, countywide, but right now in the city, we're not strong financially, which impacts the rest of the county. So we've, we've got to look at that. But I will say that again, some of, the, some of this, you know, our fiscal issues sit right at the doorstep of our state government. You know, they are sitting on property. You know, for years, we talked about where the correctional facility is right down the street, mm -hmm. that we'd like to have that back because that could create rateable revenues for us here in the city. You know, all the other pieces of property that the state sits on. You know, so one of my colleagues asked me, like, what's really going on with the finance in the city? And I said, well, let me ask you, could any other municipality in this county operate on 47% of its, uh, its rateable tax base. And he said, no, that's what the city of Trenton is doing right now, you know, because of state government, also because we have a, a high proliferation of nonprofits in this municipality. We have a lot of churches in this municipality. It's only 7.25 square miles. So what I'm hearing from the rest of the county is there's concern. There's concern about our, our leadership. There's concern about our finances. I am hearing that countywide. Politics has been a part of your life since childhood. How is it different on the inside? This is your first campaign. Is it different as a participant rather than a uh, an observer or supporter? Well, I mean, you're scrutinized a lot heavier. Uh, I understand what my, my mother went through for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's, and it's, it's very different. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to really exercise um, the power to create change 
to give people voices who don't typically have a voice you know, at this particular level of government. And I think that that's what's really, really important for me. That's the, one of the main reasons that I ran. Uh, you know, it was important that we begin to give people a voice and allow people to be heard. You know, there are people that, are, that are, have been jobless for a long time. The, the unemployment rate in the city of Trenton is double that of the national, you know, the national average. We've got, the, we, those people need their voices to be heard. They want to work. They want places to be, uh, to be employed. And they want good work, good employment. You know, that's why I have such issues when I watch, you know, our governor attack our unions and, you know, and attack working class people. And when I look at, you know, things that he's, he's been cutting in our budgets, you know, my son, as you know, is a child with special needs. You know, and it seems like, you know, this governor has attacked people who can't defend themselves. Uh, you know, I look at there's a, a program called Early Intervention, which uh, would help my son, who was born three months, one day premature. Uh, when we left Jefferson Hospital, they said, you know, we're going to send someone to your home from early intervention and they're going to help you understand what your son will need. And if he needs to go to school early, then they'll have to they'll help you do that as well. My son had to enter school at the age of two and a half. Early intervention did that for him. This governor put it in the budget and then redlined, you know, millions of dollars out of the early intervention program. You know, that hurts people who you know, are already spending a lot of money because you have a child who has special needs. And so that's what I enjoy about this particular part of uh, being in, in the public office. It's giving a voice to those people who don't typically have voice. Okay. Is there uh, anything else we haven't touched on that you want to, uh, to, to, to bring up as uh, part of your, what you're trying to do with your campaign? Well, I think that it's critical. You know, you know that I'm a, I'm a Trentonian. I'm a diehard Trentonian. Um, I want to make sure that Trenton represents well at this next upcoming election. We, we get out, we get our vote out, but I think that it's important that we allow our voices to be heard, to say, hey, look, you know, this is what we want out of our, out of our officials. Uh, and we want to have a voice, we want to be heard. Uh, and Governor Christie, we're not gonna take this because this is a warm up for next year. You know, we have a presidential election coming up next year. My opinion is that we need to come out and show him that we are here, uh, that we will be voting against him because he's not for us. He's not for urban areas. He's not for, you know, for WIC programs. He's not for programs that help uh, you know, young mothers with children. He's not for programs that uh, help people with special needs. He's not for programs that help people who are indigent or poor. Uh, you know, so we need to allow our voices to be heard and to say, we're not gonna continue to take this. And Governor Christie, we're coming after you next. Thank you, Freeholder. We've been talking to Sam Frisbee, current Mercer County Freeholder and running for his first three-year term on the Democratic ticket on the election coming up November 8th. Thank you for tuning in.